What's up guys, my name is Mark Steiner and today we're going to be talking about what's in my camera bag. Let's get right into it. The best place to start is the actual camera bag I'm using and I'm still using the Peak Design 30L backpack. This backpack has been an absolute lifesaver. It has amazing compartments for all of my gear. It protects it. It's waterproof so nothing is getting in even if it's downpouring or you're going through waterfalls. And I've even had a bird poop on this thing and it cleaned off real easy. So this bag is a real trooper. It's now three years old, so it's it's getting up there, but uh, it looks practically brand new because of just how well built it is, and I really appreciate that. Not only does this bag have enough compartments for all my cameras and lenses, but it also has these great side compartments for all your little knickknacks like your cleaning cloths, your lens filters, your batteries. It's just a great bag, and I highly recommend it. On top of all that, you also have this great computer compartment that has enough space to fit my 16 inch MacBook Pro and this thing is my editing machine. This is where I do all my editing of photos and video. This is one of the best investments I've made for my business and it's just an absolute champ. I've been editing more so in DaVinci Resolve these days and it just takes those files so well. The color grading is great and then in Lightroom is where I'm doing most of my batch photo editing and Photoshop is where I do most of my very intense photo editing. So this thing handles it all. It's my mobile command station and I freaking love this thing. Speaking of my mobile command center, this is at the heart of it. This is the Samsung T7 Touch. This is an amazing little SSD. It's the size of a credit card. It has blazing fast speeds and I do all of my editing off of this, both photo and video. And then when that project is done, I'll move it to a slower bigger drive for storage. And this year, that hard drive is the WD My Passport 5 terabyte. This thing is not the best thing on the market. It's not anything impressive, but the price to performance ratio is what you're really paying for here. You're paying a hundred bucks for five terabytes of storage and that's incredible. So I'm doing all my editing off the fast little drive and then all my storage on the large, slow, big, clunky drive. And because my 16 inch is only USB-C, that means I need to have a USB-C hub dongle with me in order to actually plug things in. And this time round, it's the Anchor Power Expand Plus. This thing is so clutch. It has two USB ports, has an ethernet port, SD card, micro SD card, HDMI, and an additional USB-C port with power delivery. So super clutch dongle that does practically everything you need. But enough about computers and how I edit. This is a what's in my camera bag video. Let's talk about some cameras and lenses. The biggest upgrade to my kit this year has been the a7S III, what you're looking at me through right now. And this thing has been a game changer. It is practically a cinema camera in a mirrorless body. This thing is the ultimate 4K creator camera. It's 4K 120, 4K 60, and then your regular 4K frame rates, as well as some amazing codecs. You even have 240p in 1080, and that upscales really well if you know what you're doing. So this camera is just an absolute beast. The colors out of this are great. The autofocus is amazing. And what blows my mind beyond compare is the low light performance. I can literally shoot pitch black ISO 12800 and this thing looks like it's daylight, like no noise. This thing is absolutely incredible. But what I don't think enough people are actually talking about with this camera is just because the low light performance is great does not make this a night only camera. That means that in every situation, this is a more beneficial camera. You can use less expensive, less powerful lights and achieve the same look as a more expensive, more powerful light. Currently, I'm using a Godox SL60W with a little softbox to light me, and it's at 50%. And then with little lights out in the field, you can use them and lights that you would never expect to be able to use as key lights suddenly become key lights. And that is so helpful, especially when you're out in the field running and gunning. This camera allows you to do more with less and really takes those unideal lighting situations and makes them usable. And that, I think, is a feature that no other camera really offers. Oh, did I also mention it has no record limit? That is so clutch. This camera also features Sony's brand new card slots and this is so clutch because now you can use SD cards or the brand new CF Express Type A, which is what I'm currently using. And that is a game changer because you have these amazingly blazing fast read write speeds and that is just peace of mind for me. If you're gonna buy a Ferrari, you wanna put the best gas in that thing. And because I'm using the CF Express Type A card, I went out and bought the CF Express Type A card reader and this thing is Oh my God, this thing is a game changer. I can transfer like a hundred gigabytes in less than five minutes. 
Oh, when you're offloading your footage, that's insane. You know how clutch that is that you don't have to go like cook lunch, come back in a half hour and still be waiting. It's done like that, a hundred gigabytes in less than five minutes. That's mind blowing. So super clutch, but not only does it work with the CF Express Type A, it also works with SD cards. So when I'm offloading photos from my A7R 3 it's also blazing fast and I love that. So if you're doing any kind of massive offloading, this thing is a lifesaver. All right, enough about the S3, On to the next thing in my camera bag. If you've been following my channel for more than six months, you know that this channel and most of my work has been shot on the A7R 3 with the battery grip. This thing is just that all-in-one champion, you know? Even now, three and a half years later, this thing still is going along and I love it. Great image quality, great autofocus with that 3.0 update last year. It was just so good. You're getting awesome stuff. It's definitely showing its age in the video category, but man, 42 megapixel photos, tack sharp, and now with that time lapse function, ah, oh, I freaking love this camera. I'm not using it for video anymore because I have the S3, but this thing is still my default photo camera and I love this thing. It's so good. I will, however, say that when the a7R5 slash a7 IV come out in the near future, I will definitely be upgrading to one of those two. I don't know which yet, but the R3 is still a staple in my camera bag and I freaking love that thing. Let's move on to lenses. I currently have three lenses in my collection and the first one we're going to be talking about is the one you're viewing me through right now, the 85mm 1.8. This is one of the first lenses I ever bought and it's been a trooper. This is a staple in what I like to shoot and it's just so good. In my opinion, the 85 1.8 is still one of the best lenses that Sony makes for their cameras. It's better than the 85 1.4 in my opinion because it's smaller, lighter, cheaper, and faster at autofocusing, especially in video autofocus, which I love. It's that perfect portrait lens that always flatters your subject and it looks so good in video too. You just point it at anything in video mode and people are like, that looks cinematic. And you're like, yeah, it does. That bokeh is just Mm, that depth of field on the 85 1.8 is so nice and that's why I'm using it right now because it's making this not so great background look a little bit prettier and I love this I've been using it on my video shoots especially this one that I shot recently oh that was shot 98% on this lens and it just looks so good and I freaking Love it. Check out that video if you're interested. This next lens is the most recent addition to my collection. I bought this last year when it first came out because I was so impressed with this lens, the 20mm 1.8G. This thing is just so nice and it's really taken on a whole new kind of photography and videography for me because with that super wide angle, when you do like some 2.39 aspect ratio stuff in video mode, it looks super good. But I've also been loving it for street photography and landscapes and cityscapes. This thing just looks so majestic and it makes these cityscapes way cooler than they look in real life, you know? So I'm very happy with how this lens looks. I'm gonna be throwing up some images I've shot with this lens, but it just looks so good and it's so sharp. The autofocus is so fast. That 1.8 just makes everything look good when you need it to, but I stop it down when I'm doing stuff and it just, this lens is so good. The last lens I have in my collection is the Sigma 35 1.4. This thing is also just a staple lens that I use all the time for photography and videography and I freaking love it. That depth of field you get with the 35 1.4 looks so good. Those Sigma art lenses look great. This thing is old faithful, you know, like this thing is built like a tank. Image quality is pristine. Video autofocus is good enough for most situations and photo wise, it's just so good. And I use it all the time. Like I've shot so much with this lens. You can't go wrong with this lens. Now let's talk about lens filters. This is a new category for me. I used to have a very cheap, affordable ND filter that I would use on my 67mm lenses and that I have upgraded to, but man, this year has really been the year of buying a lot of pieces of glass that go in front of my lens that are very expensive and it's just like, oh my god. Oh, the whole setup is already expensive and then you buy these pieces of glass that you screw on the front of your lens and you're like, why am I, why am I paying so much? 
Ah, oh, the life of a photographer videographer. Gotta love it. You're just constantly spending money. The first of these lens filters we're gonna talk about is the Hollywood Blackmagic quarter strength filter. This thing is a cinematic, beautiful diffusion filter. It looks so good. I've used it on a couple of my talking headshot videos and I've used it out for photography and videography as well and it looks really good. The way it does halation on certain lights really does look like Cine Still 800T, and it's just beautiful because it really adds that cinematic tone and vibe to your photography and videography when you have it on. I love that filter so much that I kind of wanted to start experimenting with other filters, especially ones that people have highly recommended to me for years, and that led me to buy the ProMist quarter strength filter. This thing is legendary in the photography and videography community, and I've been seeing a lot more photography done with this kind of filter because it really adds that mood and tone of the imagery, and I was like, all right, okay, I see what you're doing there and I started using it for my photography, and oh, it is an absolute game changer. I did a whole photo shoot with this ProMist filter if you wanna check out the images I got from that, but it just makes my life so much easier. It really makes your images more cinematic with that nice halation, but another thing I love about this filter is that with this filter, not only do you get that beautiful halation and those raising of the shadows, but you're also getting that really nice highlight roll off and it looks great on skin tones. So you're kind of smoothing out the skin as you go along. And when you're doing photography with this lens, that just makes your subject pop and it really lessens the amount of skin retouching you have to do. So I found myself on client work, instead of having to go into Photoshop and doing high-end skin retouching that takes 45 minutes to an hour per image, depending on the person, that I could just leave it in Lightroom and not have to skin retouch because just naturally they looked flawless. And I love that. It looked dewy, it looks cinematic, and I, I, it looks great. So this filter is an absolute clutch machine, but I also used it for my videography, and oh, it just looks so good. And between these two filters, I'm having a hard time picking which one I like better. I've been using the ProMist more because I kind of like the look just a little bit better, but I could definitely see myself using the Hollywood Black Magic on certain occasions, but if I were to do it over again, I probably would only buy the ProMist unless you really want that more cine still kind of look. So we talked about more creative filters, and now we're going to be moving on to more very functional filters. These are variable and D filters. These are both from Polar Pro, both Peter McKinnon edition. This is the version one, and this is the version two. Now you might be asking why I have two filters. This is the six to nine strength, and this is the two to five stop strength. So there's definitely a different use case for both of these. But the reason why I decided to go with the version two is not only did it just come out and I was very excited, but this one has the built-in mist. So the same functionality of the ProMist filter just now built into an ND filter, which I really like. So you don't have to filter stack to get that same effect. It's just built into the filter. And I really like that because I don't like filter stacking and I don't like elongating my lenses or screwing things on. It just deteriorates the quality the more stuff you put in in front of the lens. So if I can have one filter that does it all, that's great. So that's why I freaking love this lens filter. Not only that, but it's very compact and the packaging it comes with just makes it that it's super functional, easy to use. You just screw it on, and then this fits onto the top of the camera cover, and it's just great. So this filter is awesome, and I've been finding myself using the two to five stop strength a lot, but you know, when it's really sunny and hot outside, the six to nine stop is the way to go. And this is why I decided to go with the version one for this one, because it doesn't have the ProMist built in, and it has that very smooth, switching between the stops. It doesn't have hard stops. So when I'm doing video work, it's very smooth while changing versus the new one that has hard stops. So it's very clickable changing through how dark your image is. Obviously you're going to be using the six to nine stop more when it's brighter outside and you need more ND, but I also find myself using it for long exposure photography. So that is super helpful as well. And that's again why I decided to have it not with the mist. So everything is just super sharp and it looks great. Let's talk audio. What you're listening to me through right now is the Deity HDTX and S-Mic 2S. I freaking love this setup. I did a whole video about this setup and it's just very affordable for the audio quality you're getting out of this. And I love the HDTX because it's a recorder that records 24 bit and it sounds amazing. And yes, it's not 32 bit. There are recorders out there that do 32 bit. I even have one and we're gonna be talking about that in a second. But just because it's not 32-bit, don't write this one off. 
it sounds great. Like whatever they're using in this, it sounds great. And I've compared it between the two, the 24 bit and the 32 bit, and the 24 bit sounds better because it's a higher quality machine. So it sounds great. And the SY2S, I really love for my voice. It just adds that nice little bass that I love. Obviously, I'm going to be EQing stuff in post, but this is a very high quality recording setup. It's very small, very compact, and I travel with it everywhere, and it's just great. I use it for my talking headshots in the studio, I use it for my podcast, and I use it as a very like wireless remote when I'm out in the wild that I've used on multiple videos because the audio quality is so good, and I kind of like that like reporter journalist vibe when you're out there with a mic holding in your hand. So it sounds really good, the quality is great, and I just freaking love this. It records to a micro SD, which I plug into my laptop and record there, so it's just really, really good. Up next is my most recent addition to my audio kit, the Rode VideoMic NTG. This thing, ah, oh, if I could only have one mic, this would be it, because it just does it all. This thing is so freaking good. Not only does it sound amazing, it has all of these features right on the microphone built in, which is great. It's USB-C, so it's wonderful. You don't need to change batteries. You can just charge it and one charge lasts freaking forever. But on top of all that, I use it as an on-camera shotgun mic, which is great. You can use it as a boom mic for the kind of stuff I'm doing with this mic, which is a wonderful. But with the USB-C to lightning attachment or even the USB-C to USB-C, this becomes one of the most versatile mics in the world. Like you can now plug this into your computer and do recording that way. So if you're doing Zoom calls or if you're doing live streaming, this mic is the way to go. It just plugs directly in and you have a new audio source. With the USB-C to lightning attachment, you can now plug this into your older iPad or brand new iPhone and you can use it on Clubhouse or Twitter Spaces or audio memos or anything you're recording on your phone or iPad. That's so helpful that you have a mic that does everything. This is probably the most versatile microphone there is on the market and it's a great bang for buck in my opinion because you can do so much with it. The next piece of audio equipment we're talking about is the Tentacle Sync Track E. This thing is so clutch. It's a 32-bit float recorder. It comes with a lav mic. This thing is just you kind of just plug and play, forget about it, and you know that your audio is safe. It's almost impossible to clip 32-bit float files so you just have a lot of flexibility in post to work with it and it's just so simple to use. They have an app on your phone that you can use with it, and if you are someone who is not very comfortable with monitoring or recording audio, you can kind of just turn this on, click record, and know that you're safe. So this is very clutch, especially when you're running and gunning. I don't need to monitor my audio, I just need to know that it's recording. Highly recommend. And while we're on the topic of audio, let's talk about headphones. These are the ATH M50Xs, and this is what I use to monitor and edit all of my audio. I have other headphones when I'm listening or out and about, and they have different purposes, but these are my dedicated editing headphones now. They're wired, so you're getting that amazing connection, no latency, and you're getting that very flat, very professional sound out of these at a very good bang for buck. So if you're gonna be editing audio, these are like the go-to. Let's talk about lighting. One of the best purchases I've made in the past year is the Aperture MC, which you can see right behind me that's lighting the background, that's giving me this little halo, that nice little separation. I love this light. This thing is so clutch and it has no business being as good as it is. Because it's an RGB WW light, not only are you getting that amazing RGB spectrum, so if you want to RGB anything, this is the go-to light, but it's also WW, so you're getting that daylight and tungsten balance and also anything in between. I'm currently using it on the tungsten balance setting because I like that warm light look, especially when I'm using daylight balance light on my face, so it adds that nice contrast. But this thing has been so clutch, not only for, you know, spicing up the studio and adding little lights where they didn't exist before, but on my photo shoots and video shoots as well. On some of my most recent photo shoots, I've been using it as a key light, and it looks amazing, especially when paired with my ProMist filter. It looks so good, and people are like, Mark, what light were you using? Did you have like off-camera flash? Like, did you have another person helping you light this situation? And I'm just like holding my camera here in one hand, have my little aperture light in the other hand, and I'm clicking away. It works amazing, and I'm just like, I don't understand why this light is so good, but it's great. It comes with this little rubber diffusion and I use that all the time. Highly recommend this light. I actually have two now, so clutch. 
I'm going to be buying more in the future because this light is just amazing. Another recent addition to my camera bag is the DJI RS2. This thing is so clutch, it's just the creme de la creme when it comes to handheld gimbals like that. This thing is carbon fiber, it's lightweight, has an amazing payload, has all these smart features. They even updated it now so you can control the aperture with the ring. I love that. I love that so much that when you're walking out and about, you're like, oh, we're changing situations. Smoothly change from 1.8 to like f5.6 with the scroll of this wheel. That is so wonderful. I was upgrading from my SC, which in comparison to this feels like a toy. And one of the main reasons why I decided to do that because I wanted to be able to use my 35mm lens on a gimbal and I couldn't do it on the SC because of the payload but also because of the way the arms were built. But the arms are built amazing on this one. There's plenty of space for practically any lens that you're going to have. It can handle a 1DX Mark III with a 70 to 200. So it can even handle baby cinema cameras like the C300 Mark II, I believe. So this thing. It's just like the perfect gimbal for run and gun shooters. It's so helpful. It has a little touch screen on the back as well. This thing, oh, and it just feels good in the hand too, right? Like if you're gonna be holding a gimbal for hours on end, you want it to feel good. And this grip feels great. Oh, speaking of the grip, now you can actually charge the grip without it being plugged in, which is very helpful. So you can leave the rest in your bag, just take the grip, charge that, put it back in. Very clutch. I shot an entire video on this, oh, it just, it's so smooth, it looks so good, and that entire time I was shooting the video, I think that video took like four hours to shoot, I didn't really get tired holding that, so that was, that's great. This is the Canon AE-1 program, this is my film camera, there's a nifty 50 lens on here, I love this thing, it's great, I've been trying to get into film photography more. I want to learn new mediums, I want to challenge myself, and uh, it's just kind of cool. So also, I found a place that develops and scans film for $5, which is one of my biggest issues with film, that it's very expensive because I hated having to pay $50 to $60 to develop and scan my film. I'm like, I could buy a new SD card every time I scan film. So after finding this place that does it for five bucks, I'm much more encouraged to try film. I currently have a roll of Portra 160 in there, and after I finish that roll, I'm going to be dabbling with Cine Still 800T, and I'm very excited about that. The last piece of gear I keep in my camera bag are these Sony XM4 headphones. I love having headphones when I'm out and about shooting photos and videos just for myself, especially when I'm doing street photography or landscape photography. I love having music that allows me to feel inspired and just get in the zone while I'm shooting and forget the world. These are noise canceling, they have amazing battery life. These things are so nice. So I love having these in my camera bag. I always need music when I go out. But that's everything in my camera bag. I love these kind of videos because I love seeing the kind of equipment creators use to create what they create. And I think it's so cool. And I love seeing if there's something that they have that could make my life easier that I should add to my arsenal because I think that's always so interesting seeing the new types of gear that come out. But let me know in the comment section down below, did you like this kind of video? Is there any particular gear you want me to cover in more detail? I would love to do a lens filter comparison in the near future, so maybe stay tuned for that. As always, everything that I talked about is linked in the description down below if you want to check it out for yourself. My name is Mark Steiner, and I'll see you next time.